Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. And I'm Matt Hummel. Happening now, Jamestown police say they responded to a large brawl. Details coming up. Plus, today is primary day. We'll let you know about some key races happening in the area. But first, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter is standing by with a first look at our weather. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Justin and Matt, and happy Tuesday, everybody. We made it through Monday, but Monday was very warm and it was sticky as well. And we had a few rain showers last night. That rain is hightailed out of here and it's gonna be a dry afternoon, a little bit cooler, but that humidity is still in play once again for today. I check on the pollens. Uh, now, since we're in summer, the pollen's actually gone from trees to grass and ragweed. Uh, those are the two main culprits of our pollens, of, of our pollen problems right now, grass and ragweed. Of course, as we get into the summer, those two are the main culprits. So sneezing, sniffling, those are just, you know, the days ahead as we go into summer here. So hour by hour, temperatures won't be as warm as they were yesterday, but we still will be into the uh, mid to upper 70s. There is a small chance, two in 10, of a light rain shower through the early afternoon, but it's a very small chance. I didn't even put it in the graphic, but there is a small chance of a rain shower, but the majority of the day should be dry, but that humidity still play and it spikes up big O time as we head throughout the week. We'll talk about it with that seven day later on in the show. Justin and Matt. Alrighty, Dakota. Thank you. Our top story. Today is primary day across New York State. Polls are open from noon to 9 p.m. So polls just open now for vo voters, and many of whom who are re registered Republicans are looking to check the box of their choice for state Senate. The largest race is between Chautauqua County Executive George Borello and Allegheny County Board of Legislators Chairman Curtis Crandall for New York State's 57th Senate seat Republican nomination. The two are partaking in a special election to fill the seat vacated by former New York State Senator Kathy Young, who took a job in the private sector earlier this year. New York's 57th State Senate District consists of Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, and Allegheny Counties, and seven towns in Livingston County. Now, another big race of the day is between Jamestown City Councilman at large Andrew Liuzzo and Chautauqua County Legislator Dave Wilfong who are vying for the City of Jamestown mayoral Republican nomination. And longtime City Ward 2 Councilman Tony Dolce is aiming to fend off challenger Raven Mason Thompson. The final, eye, the final race to keep an eye on is between current Town of Carroll Supervisor Laura Smith and challenger Russell Payne. Both are eyeing the Republican Party's nomination for Town Supervisor. Now, as a reminder, New York State has a closed primary system meaning only registered party members can vote only in their own party's primary. Polls, again, across the state are open from noon until 9 p.m. WNY News Now will host live election results throughout the evening on WNY News Now's 24-7 streaming network, mobile app, and Facebook page. Yeah, certainly should be a uh, very interesting uh, night tonight. And, uh, you know, I really encourage everyone to download that app because that will be the uh, number one place uh, to get those results live. Um, we will be pushing them out on there uh, for everyone uh, to uh, see in real time. Um, other news that we are following this hour. An 18-year-old is facing charges following a large fight on East 8th Street here in the city of Jamestown. Police say that happened Monday morning. Jamestown police say officers were dispatched to the scene of a large crowd fighting in the street. Upon arrival, police were able to dispense that crowd, but officers noticed several smaller groups form and began moving west through the area. Around 20 minutes later, police reportedly observed numerous people in the backyard of a Cherry Street address. The homeowner there advised officers that the group was unwanted. As police detained a male subject within that pack, an 18-year-old female quickly approached them. That woman allegedly bumped an officer with her body. Police say she then continued to walk and pull away from that officer. Police say the officer was, however, able to gain control and took the female into custody without further incident. Officers say the 18-year-old was taken to Jamestown City Jail pending arraignment. She's charged with second-degree obstruction of governmental administration. Police did not identify that 18-year-old female in their report. 
New York State's Department of Environmental Conservation announced this week that they are making substantial headway in eradicating giant hogweed. DEC Commissioner Basil Sagos says that with help from local partners over the past 12 years, the invasive species has been eradicated from more than 600 sites across the state. Sagos urges New Yorkers to remain vigilant and report hogweed to the DEC. And officials say giant hogweed can cause severe skin and eye irritation, including painful burns and scarring when skin exposed to its sap becomes more sensitive to UV radiation. Now, as a noxious weed, it is unlawful to propagate, sell, or transport the plant. And in addition to health concerns, giant hogweed negatively impacts the state's ecosystem by crowding out native plants and contributing to soil erosion. Around 2,400 giant hogweed plants exist in over 50 counties statewide, and the majority of active sites are concentrated in central and western New York. With landowner permission, crews visit and remove these invasive plants using root cutting, herbicide, and umbel removal control methods. For more information about giant hogweed, including eradication efforts, plant ID, or to view the 2018 annual report, visit the DEC's website. Well, Jamestown Jammers fans can expect to see a competitive, ga competitive game of baseball return to Russell E. Dietrich Jr. Park in 2020. George Carlo, he works for the Secrets of Champions Foundation. They're the group who will run the Jammers franchise, is looking forward to bringing baseball back to its glory days here in the city of Jamestown. Carlo said the new Jammers team will act like a player development laboratory aiming to recruit rising stars. So those things that we've used over the years in Major League Baseball and uh, high level mi minor league baseball, we're, we're going to do here with these players. So we'll be able to recruit players from across the country who are rising college players to come here because they're going to get something here in the way of development for their own careers that they wouldn't be able to get elsewhere. Now, Carlos said in addition to that player development on the field, his group hopes to foster good life habits off. That include respect, relationships, nutrition, sleep, repair, and recovery. Now, yesterday, the team's new management, Jamestown Community Baseball LLC, led by Mr. Baseball himself, Russell E. Dietrich Jr., officially signed a lease to Russell E. Dietrich Jr. Park through at least the 2025 season. Carlos said next week the team will be announcing their signing of the general manager, field manager, and other staffing. In addition to Jammers Baseball in 2020, the Secrets of Champions Foundation is hosting a training camp in August from August 12th through the 15th for young baseball players in the community, a coaches clinic, and a camp for handicapped baseball players as well. So uh, really cool to see um, the game of baseball return to those halls of Russell uh, Dietrich uh, Jr. Park with only minor hiatus, of course. Uh, what did they say now? It's uh, June 2020? Yeah, June uh, 2020 is when they're expected to start sometime around there. And um, I know with events like what they're having in August, um, they, they certainly want to try to keep, yeah. you know, something going on mm -hmm. for the community um, and, and, for, and for the true fans of the sport. Because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it was, it, you know, they, they say that it was a great um, ex opportunity for the former management of the yeah. Jammers. Um, but certainly being able to keep that baseball here, and not only that, but... Uh, you know, try to get bigger names yes. in there. Certainly uh, will be interesting to see, um, you know, how that develops. And, um, you know, they're expecting to release much more of those details, as we said, come next Monday mm -hmm. um, for the specific team yeah. and things. Because they're still trying to, you know, it's there is what they're telling us, but it's not officially there. Yeah, so it's, they don't like, wanna... it's almost like an expansion team in professional right, yeah. sports. Like you, you start off with your your front office, and then you have to build your way. So it'll be really cool to see, I think, the next year or uh, two, watching the team being constructed. That's going to be the best. And certainly there's that opportunity to have, you know, if they can find successful mm -hmm. baseball, um, to, to have that 
team here for a long amount of time. Yeah. You know, this is not a one-year lease. So um, uh, good, good for them. And uh, uh, we will, of course, keep everyone informed um, as things roll along. Um, David, uh, great to see you, sir. He says, can't wait to see a game. Totally agree. Um, good afternoon to the Jester Promoting Company. Hopefully you're having a good day. Hello to Donna. Hello to uh, Cindy. Um, hello to Lori as well, um, and David reminding people uh, to don't forget to get out and vote. That is right, today um, is primary day, um, so you can have details right now on wnynewsnow.com forward slash election 2019. We have everything you need to know there. Uh, Tony, good afternoon to you. Robin, hello. Uh, Bindix, hello to you. Uh, Smathers is joining us. Always good to see you. Rory and Pam is here as well. Brenda um, is joining us. Hopefully, uh, and Jason is here as well. Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day. Coming up, a lot more news to tell you about how 3D mammography is becoming more popular. Details in our Health Minute in just a bit. But first, a Western New York native will be receiving the Medal of Honor today from President Trump. Dakota. And the high yesterday was actually 81 degrees. That is several degrees above the forecasted high yesterday. And look at that low temperature this morning. 65, muggy and mild. More of those nights are on the way. WNY News Now continues in a minute, so don't go away. Live and on demand, you're watching WNY News Now. Now open in downtown Jamestown, Pearl City Hops, Restaurant and Tavern. I have some real old timey dishes on there that I'm just giving new life to. Like there's a shepherd's pie on there that's gonna have some bison in it. You know, real thick hearty gravy. Um, then I'm also doing beer flights. We're pairing it with a set of sliders, a set of tacos, and a set of mini rolls. So everything's gonna have its own pair so you can get a taste of a little bit of everything and all the beers. We don't want to be known as the restaurant in the hotel. We want to be known as Pearl City Hops. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. What we did is we threw the kids away. And that is an issue for me. It's this illusion of a design for the future while still living in a society that suppresses the past. There's a lot of small businesses out here. But we're not corporate made, so we don't get the attention that we deserve also. You put money in your residence and the value of your property does not increase. You know, we've taken God out of the equation. Because of that, I believe that we have gone on this downhill spiral. Raven's been uh, at my home. I think this is the fourth meeting to discuss issues. How's things going? What would you like to have see change? And she's pushing for small businesses. I just think it's time to try something new and see if someone else can make a positive difference. That's the type of genuine person that uh, should be in public service. So if we want to make a difference, we have to vote differently. I'm Raven Mason Thompson, running for Ward 2 City Council, and look forward to your vote on the June 25th primary. Well, happening right now, President Donald Trump is getting ready to award the Medal of Honor to a Western New York native and first living Iraq war veteran this afternoon. According to a White House press release, former Army Sergeant David G. Bellavia is receiving the award for his conspicuous gallantry while serving as a staff sergeant in the United States Army. While in Falja, Iraq, in 2004, Bellavia went into a house where his squad was trapped. He provided cover while engaging with insurgents so that his fellow soldiers could get out. Bellavia joined the army in 1999 and also served in Kosovo. He has a written book about his experience in overseas and now has a daily radio talk show in Buffalo. You can watch the award ceremony live right here on WNY News Now on our 24-hour streaming network, our mobile app, or at Facebook Live today at 3.30. And it was 10 years ago today that the world was shocked with the shocking, rocked rather, with the shocking news of Michael Jackson's death. He died on June 25, 2009, falling victim to cardiac arrest. Now, the L.A. County coroner later determined that Jackson's death was a homicide due to, quote, an acute propofol intoxication. His doctor was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. The King of Pop was born on August 29, 1958 in Gary, Indiana. At a young age, he and his brothers started singing together in the Jackson 5, later signing with Motown Records. Their hits included I Want You Back 
ABC, and The Love You Save. Jackson later broke out as a solo artist, winning eight Grammy Awards for his Thriller album. Jackson was 50 years old when he died. His sister Janet Jackson says his legacy will live on. And the popularity of 3D mammograms has skyrocketed, but are they better than 2D? Some say 3D is more accurate, although evidence that it actually reduces the number of deaths from breast cancer is lacking. Meredith Wood takes a look in today's Health Minute. For most women, when it comes to mammograms and breast cancer screenings, the standard 2D technology, which scans the front and sides of your breast tissue, has been the gold standard. But a couple of years ago, a more advanced 3D mammogram started becoming available. And since then, it's taken off. According to research published in the medical journal JAMA Internal Medicine, 3D screenings more than tripled from 2015 to 2017, from 13% of screening examinations to 43%. The 3D technology popularity varies by region and income levels. The northeast and northwest parts of the country saw the most screenings, but the southeast regions haven't been as quick to adopt it. And as it is usually with new technology, people in more affluent areas have been quicker to utilize it. The exact benefits of 3D over the standard 2D images have yet to be proven, so for now the Food and Drug Administration requires a patient to get both. For today's Health Minute, I'm Meredith Wood. All right, Meredith, thank you. A new study finds that commonly prescribed drugs are tied to a nearly 50% higher dementia risk in older adults. The observational study, published in the journal JAMA Internal Medicine on Monday, suggests that the link is strongest for certain classes of antichlorogenic drugs. They include antidepressants, drugs to uh, treat vertigo, motion sickness or vomiting, and bladder conditions. The researchers looked at data from nearly 300,000 people in Britain, and they found the odds of dementia increased from 1.06% among those with the lowest antichlorogenic exposure to nearly 1.5% among those with the highest exposure. The researchers found only an association between the drugs and dementia risk, and the study did not prove the drugs contribute to causing dementia. An editorial published with the study says that more research is needed to determine if the drugs are actually a reversible risk factor for dementia. Now, the study's lead author says that people taking the drugs should not stop taking them without counseling, consulting with their doctor first, as that could cause harm. And uh, dementia and Alzheimer's are uh, two of the worst things that I think anyone could go through mm. um you know I, i've i've seen it firsthand um in a, a, a you know a, a, a family member um and it's it's hard mm -hmm. um and uh certainly you know i i know the the great scientists around the world are working to find you know reasonings mm. and cause um but uh uh you know it's it seems like they're always yeah. to be continued you know and people mm -hmm. want results now yeah absolutely i i hope one day maybe we, they can find something that would be nice yeah yeah certainly mm -hmm. would be um well happy uh tuesday happy primary day to all of you that's kind of uh you know, we always joke around with our Roy B. Palero that uh, the first day of baseball season and election night are the two big uh, holidays mm -hmm. here in the newsroom. Absolutely. But um, for for us, primary day is another another one, especially this year because normally primaries around locally are generally you know not very contested. No. I mean, you look at like nationally, right? Where you have like a presidential primary, yeah. which there is not one this year, um, you you usually see that yeah. you're pretty big, um, but but here not so much. Uh, so a couple really big races that we're keeping our eye on that uh, we've been talking about um, on uh, primary night. Just to remind everyone uh, between Chautauqua County Executive George Barello and uh, Kurt Crandall, um, who are vying for the state senate seat. Um, the two of them talked to us during a debate, although I imagine most voters by now have already made up their mind uh, in regards uh, to that. Um, you also have the race between Dave Wolfong, you see there, and Andrew Liuzzo, who are vying for the city of Jamestown's mayoral seat. Um, and then we also have uh, Raven Mason Thompson is trying to upset Tony Dolce mm -hmm. to get Ward 2 City yep. Council here in Jamestown. Um, and a number of other races as well that we're monitoring very closely. Mm -hmm. And we'll have details throughout the night on uh, WNYNewsNow.com um, and our 24-hour streaming network as well to uh, keep everyone um, in the loop. 
So uh, hello to Brenda. Hello to Amy. Uh, hopefully you are doing well. Hello to uh, Nora as well. Thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, uh, Noah as well. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully no, no. Um, you are having a good day out there. And yeah, there's a lot of sunshine. It is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can, get outside and enjoy it. Coming up next, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. He's standing by with a live look. There's that sunshine in our weather. And later, JPS honors more than 40 employees throughout the district that are retiring. Details ahead as News Now continues. Well, hey, my name's Dave Wolfong, and I want to be the mayor of the city of Jamestown. I grew up in the city of Jamestown, graduated from Jamestown High School, and after graduation, I went into the U.S. Army for four years. When I came back to Jamestown, I noticed that Jamestown had taken a different road, a road that I wasn't happy with. In 2014, I was elected as Chautauqua County representative from District 11 in the city of Jamestown. I promised my constituents three things, that I would lower taxes, I would cut wasteful spending in government, and I would decrease the size of government. And I'm proud to say that I've done all three things. I think we need to move Jamestown to the manufacturing base that it once knew and was actually king of at one time. We need to provide shovel-ready sites. We need to provide a workforce that's ready to take on those jobs and bring the tax base back to Jamestown and make Jamestown the American city that it used to be and still can be. My name's Dave Wolfong. I'm running for mayor of the city of Jamestown. Please vote for me on primary day. June 25th, the polls are open from 12 to 9. Thank you so much. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. And welcome back, and we'll kick, off, we'll kick off this weather segment with the SkyVision Camera Network. This is the camera in downtown area. You can see the camera shaking uh, in the wind with that southwest wind of 19, and the temperature currently is 69 degrees, and hey, we have a train. Uh, that is passing. Here it comes. Choo -choo. Uh, this is a train that's passing through downtown uh, Erie. We could stare at the, we could stare at that and look at that all day, but we got to move on. Uh, the high temperatures yesterday, it was very warm. We forecasted mid to upper 70s. Most everybody broke through that. The official high in Jamestown was 81, 86 in Dunkirk, 87 in Erie. That high temp of 87 actually had a, a 68 degree dew point. So that made the heat index feel more like 90 degrees out there, 79 in Olean, 86 in Buffalo. So everybody warmed up very nicely yesterday as we had the sunshine out in full force yesterday before the rain came last night. And this is where we were this morning. So again, it was another mild and muggy night. Only 65 was a low in Jamestown, 68 Dunkirk, also in Erie, also over in Batavia, 63 uh, in Olean. So it was a mild night and we got more of this to go through as we go throughout the week. Now, if you want to go out on Lake Erie today, there is a small craft advisory that is currently in effect for the for the shores of Lake Erie. Reason for that is because of the wind. Southwest winds 15 to 30 knots. That could create some wave heights around three to six feet. So there's a small craft advisory out for that. Otherwise, a mainly dry day with some peaks of sunshine. The water temperature 61 off Buffalo, 62 off Erie. That's still below average for this time of the year, but at least the lake water temperatures are starting to warm up a little bit. And speaking about uh, the humidity, it's still going to be in play. Humid day today. Humid tomorrow, Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Oppressive humidity levels. This is what we say the air you can wear. You could just go outside and wear the air when the dew points are in the 70s. And that's going to be the story throughout the late week. So news now, came. you can see the breaks in the cloud cover currently downtown. It's 72 at the airport. Got a west wind of 14. There's your wind gust of 20. And the dew point's actually below 60 right now. It's currently at 59 degrees. But that dew point will rise once again as we go throughout the day. Currently, what's going on right now, it's kind of quiet across the continental 48 right now. High pressure started to build in. This is associated with another front that's gonna move through and that could trigger off a few showers 
early tomorrow and then later in the day tomorrow. So we'll show that to you here on Future Scan. So nothing today. You can see the model run shows absolutely nothing. Dry today, dry tonight. Now, as we head into tomorrow, there's a small chance of a rain shower. This is by about six o'clock tomorrow morning. So chance of a light rain shower, that hightails out of here. And then late tomorrow afternoon, there's a chance for a couple little pop-up showers. There could be a couple thunderstorms embedded within that, but nothing heavy and we don't expect any severe weather out of that. We'll go zone by zone for you. We'll start in the eastern areas first and temperatures today should at least make it into the mid to upper 70s, maybe around 76 Randolph. Partial sunshine, but that humidity still there. You'll feel it as you walk outside. Westward we go to the Lake Erie shoreline, maybe 77 around Erie, uh, 74 around Ripley. A dry afternoon, but breezy. Southwest winds 15 to 30. Future coming up right now and uh, the temperatures uh, remain very summer-like and it's very sticky icky as we go throughout the week. That humidity is still in play. We back it down a little bit for the second half of the weekend, but we're right back near 80 once again early next week. Sports is next. Don't go away. From our doorsteps to Albany, it's about 300 miles, but most days it's like we're worlds apart. Hi, I'm George Borello. I'm running for state senate because Albany politicians don't listen, don't lead, and they put their radical New York City agenda ahead of us. George Borello was born and raised here. He built a successful business before entering public service. George knows what it takes to help employers grow and prosper. It starts with ending Albany's policies crushing local businesses. Our way of life is under attack. People are forced to leave here to look for opportunities. This has to stop. As your senator, I'll focus on training programs for workers so everyone has the skills to secure good paying jobs and local businesses can grow and thrive. I'm George Borello. I'll stand up for our hardworking families, businesses, farmers, and veterans every day. Albany is ignoring us. It's time they start listening. Conservative Republican George Morello for State Senate. The voice we need working for us. Vote primary day Tuesday, June 25th. Paid for by Borello for Senate. I listen. I brought the community together to meet with elected officials. I am accessible. I stand for full transparency and accountability. I will continue as your mayor to do these things. Vote June 25th. Andrew Arliuzzo. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at phonezoneshop.com. Happy Tuesday, sports fans, and welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. Today, with a 5 o'clock first pitch, the Rockies will battle the Angels in Game 2 of the playoffs of the Jamestown Parks Recreation and Conservation Little League Baseball Playoffs. It is the second game being played on a six-team double elimination playoff format. The winner of today's game will move to the second round, and they will play against the Blue Jays. The New York Yankees won their 50th game of the season on Monday night, defeating the Toronto Blue Jays 10-8. Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Hicks each went yard once for New York. Freddie Galvis hit a grand slam for Toronto as part of a comeback attempt from a 10-2 deficit. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. also homered for the Blue Jays. New York and Toronto will battle again tonight at 7.05, with Clayton Richard being on the starting rubber for Toronto. The Yankees' starting pitcher has yet to be determined. The game will be televised on the Yes Network. That's it for sports today. Justin and Matt, back to you. All righty, Norm. Thank you much. And Jamestown Public Schools recently honored 42 employees for their service to the district in a recent retirement reception. School Superintendent Brett Apthorpe spoke to the retirees and thanked them for their service to the district. Each retiree's principal or supervisor spoke about their service to the school or department during a recent Board of Education meeting. The retirees received a small gift from the district to honor their years of service. And for a full list of retirees, please visit our website right now, wnynewsnow.com, or, of course, the mobile app. Yeah, great to see. Um, I'm sure they will be missed there within the district, mm -hmm. but uh, good to see that they uh, will be enjoying uh, the later things in life. So uh, a little in retirement. Mr. Alpaw, one of the best music teachers probably in the school district, in my yeah. opinion. So, Oh, I yeah. like it. Yeah. If Dakota so, says it, it is. It is. <laughs> if Dakota says it, it's going to happen. Yeah. Seal of approval. 
<laughs> hey, that's going to uh, do it for us today. Of course, we remind you, stay connected with WNY News Now all evening long at WNYNewsNow.com, on our Facebook Live here, um, and on our mobile app. We'll keep you updated um, when it comes to uh, elections, uh, as uh, there's a number of big races happening right now. Polls are open. Have a great day. <laughs>